The fall ministry season is upon us. People have returned back to their regular schedule, if you're in the United States at least, which means that now is the perfect time to run a worship team workshop. As a worship team leader, it's important to make sure that our team is not just working in our worship ministry, going to worship rehearsals every week, showing up on Sunday mornings, over and over and over and over again. That's important, obedience is important, but it's also important to not just work in our worship ministry, but to work on our worship ministry. And that means to take a step back for a moment outside of the normal rhythm and pace of our worship ministry responsibilities. And instead of preparing for the next Sunday, we focus on something super specific that will help us improve and will benefit us over the next several months, really, I mean, over the entirety of our worship ministry. And so how do we do that? How do we take a step back and focus in on one thing? We do it through worship team workshops. And I guess some people call these different things, but here's what I mean when I say a worship team workshop. I mean that you and your team get together for the express purpose of not getting ready for Sunday morning, but to focus on something specific that will benefit your worship team. And so I wanna talk about today how to do that because there's different ways to do it and here's what some people do. This is how some people do them and it's not bad, this is just a way to do them. You can go to a conference, you can bring somebody into your church and all of these things, they add up into your worship ministry budget. So what is the other way that we do it? We run it by ourselves, right? And so in this video, I wanna talk about how to run it by yourself. So if you can't afford to bring somebody in from outside, if you can't afford to take your team to a worship team conference, this is how I would run a worship team workshop at my church. And the very first step is this, it's very important. Pick a date for your worship team workshop. This gives you a timeline to work towards. Also, it should be a little bit out in advance so that your team can prepare. Don't say, hey, next Saturday, we're gonna get together. Make it like a month out in advance, at least, and tell them, I wanna get together for a worship team workshop. You can set the vision for them. Tell them we're gonna be focusing on this specific thing. We'll talk about that in a second. And we're gonna be focused on that for this morning. And I like to do worship team workshops on Saturday mornings from 9 to 11.30. That way my team can eat breakfast together and then we're done by lunch. So I only have to feed them one meal. You can do it whenever you want. I just find that Saturday mornings work best for me and my team. I'm trying to think when else you would do it. I mean, we wanna do it on a weekend. I guess you could do it like Friday night as well. That's just sort of a bigger ask in my mind. Like I like to do it on Saturday mornings because people don't have like plans on Saturday mornings typically. And it, if they do have plans on Saturday, you're gone before lunch. So go have lunch and live the rest of your life. So first step, pick a date, set a date, even before you have everything planned out because you will be working on it right up to that date and that's okay, but we need to have a deadline so that we can have at least something to procrastinate towards. Now, once we have a date picked, and this isn't necessarily in sequential order, but I just like to remind people that it's good to feed your team. I once heard it said that at church, there should be no meeting without eating. People love to eat together. It is, I mean, really, it is biblical, right? What did the early church devote themselves to? They devoted themselves to the apostles' prayer, to teaching, to fellowship, and to the breaking of bread together, whether that be communion or just sharing in a meal together. Meals create fellowship. And I'm not saying you have to have some big breakfast or something, but it is nice to feed your team. So set aside, however big your team is, a little bit of your budget. It'll be worth it. Buy them some breakfast food, buy them some bagels, some orange juice, some milk, I don't know, whatever you wanna have for your worship team. Or another idea would be to get people involved in your church. Maybe there are people in your church who like to cook and you'd go to them and you'd say, hey, we're gonna have this worship team workshop on this specific date because I've already set the specific date. It's on Saturday morning. Would you be willing to serve our worship team by cooking us a meal? And I bet somebody in your church would probably love to do that if you have the capability to do that at your church. So no meeting without the eating. Provide some food for your team. Now let's get into the meat of the actual worship team workshop because I'm sure you weren't concerned about setting a date. I'm sure you weren't concerned about ordering food. If you're running this yourself, what are you concerned about? You're concerned about how am I gonna fill two to two and a half hours of time for my worship team? Like 
do I just need to get up there and lecture for forever? Because that's, that's a lot to prepare. And here's the guidance I want to give you. First of all, think about your worship team. Think, if I could focus on one thing right now that we could improve, what would it be? If I could just pick one singular topic that I think would serve my worship team well, not just for one day, but for months and years to come, what do we need to improve upon right now? Start with that question, and that will guide the information that you provide for your team. And here's the thing. You can teach all the lessons that you want to teach. You can come up with a presentation for your team. You can work with them, teaching them theology. Perhaps you want to go back over your team expectations and pull out your core document again where you lay the code of conduct and just the values of your team and go through that stuff again. That's valuable. Maybe you, your team needs to work on something musically and you need to learn how to play to a click track. Or maybe you want to learn some new songs. You have like four new songs that you want to have planned out for the coming months that you have planned to introduce to your church and you want to intentionally work on those. Maybe your team has trouble playing together where it's not like this muddy sound where everybody's clanging against each other and you just want to work on arranging some of your current songs. See, there's so many topics that you can talk about at your worship team workshop, but you need to figure out what your team needs to actually work on. Now, when it comes to presenting, whatever you're going to present, I want to encourage you to make it relational and not just informational. This is something that I kind of learned through like running Bible studies, I guess, is first of all, if you're in a small group environment, and it, this depends on the size of your team, I will say that. If you have a small team, they probably don't want to sit there, even if you have a large team, they probably don't want to sit there and hear you lecture for two hours. So what do we do? We provide enough information where they get substantive value out of it. But the majority of what I like to do is to allow them to discuss it and figure out, okay, here is the main topic that we're discussing. This is the important information, and you might speak for a half an hour to, to give that information to your team. But do not miss out on not just information, but relationship. Not just informational, but relational, which would look like, for me, breaking my team into small groups, or maybe your team is already small and they are a small group unto themselves, you present the material, whatever you're going to be teaching on, and then give time, have some questions to ask them. So let's say you're talking about uh, worship theology, and one of the key statements is worship is a treasuring of God above all other things that overflows into external acts of glorification. Maybe a question that you would ask is, okay, if worship starts with the treasuring of God in our hearts above all things, how do we, as we lead people in worship, allow them to treasure God in their hearts above all things so that the result is external acts of glorification? But how do we start with that one piece? Imagine if you had that conversation with your team. Like, they would then, first of all, you get some good ideas, but they would then be forced to think about worship, not just in a way where it's like, okay, I'm here to play music, but no, how, how am, through what I'm doing on Sunday morning, causing people to treasure God in their hearts so that worship flows from that? I'm providing the opportunity to express those external acts of glorification. So not only do you get some good ideas, not only do you guys learn from each other, but it also forces your team to think in a way to digest the concepts that you just talked. So don't just make your presentation informational, make it relational. People wanna be in relationship with each other, talk to each other, and the good benefit of that is that you don't have to teach for as long because people can talk for as long as they're gonna talk for. They can talk for 30 minutes. So if you teach for 30 minutes, they talk for 30 minutes. You teach for another 30 minutes, they talk for another 30 minutes, boom. And you throw some breakfast in there beforehand, you've got two and a half hours worth of a workshop. And it's really not as bad as you thought it was because you didn't have to teach all the time and it's probably more beneficial because it wasn't just information but it was relation. And then don't let it end on training day. Don't let your workshop information end during the workshop. This isn't just like a one-time thing and then we forget about it and never do it again. 
you should have an intentional plan. And maybe you don't even need the intentional plan up front, but just know intentionally in our coming worship rehearsals, we are going to be repeating this material for the next month. And maybe I had five, six bigger concepts within those 30 minute blocks of teaching that I did. Now I'm going for the next six weeks to bring up one of those concepts each week at my next worship rehearsal. And then for the next month and a half, you will be rehashing, reminding people of what you talked about at this worship team workshop. Don't just let it end at the workshop, but continue to push people into that understanding of whatever you wanted to talk about during your worship team workshop. Now, if you are still intimidated by this process, you might be thinking, Maybe I'll just take my team to a conference. Maybe I'll bring somebody in from outside, but those things can kind of be expensive, especially if you're in a smaller church, especially if you have a smaller budget. And that's why I've been working hard to put together a virtual worship team workshop that is much more affordable than bringing somebody in, me or somebody else, bringing them into your church to teach an in-person workshop. But it'll be just as beneficial to your team, maybe even more so, because I implement all these things that I just talked about when I was putting the workshop together. In this workshop, we're going to be talking about the foundations of worship leading, the theological foundations so that your team isn't just playing music on Sunday, but they actually understand what their role is. So we start with a big view of answering the question, what is worship? And then we focus in a little bit more. Okay, now that we know what worship is, what is corporate worship? In doing so, we lay the foundation in the first session. And then your team, not just informational, but relational, will have the chance to break into small groups, or maybe your team's already a small group, and you can discuss everything that you learn and understand how it applies to your specific church because each specific church is unique. So you'll work through the provided discussion questions to stimulate conversation with your team, and then, after a short break perhaps, you'll return for session number two where we will take the foundation, what is worship, what is corporate worship, we'll talk about what do we do in corporate worship according to the Bible, what does the Bible tell us about what we should be doing during corporate worship? And then to wrap it up, we talk about how do we take all of the theology that we just learned and apply it practically to what our role is on Sunday. And then you'll wrap up with a few more discussion questions to process all of that information that you learned. And by the end, your team will know what worship is what corporate worship is, what we're supposed to be doing when we worship corporately, and what their role is in that corporate worship gathering. So if you're interested in that, it has released this week. It is available right now. So check it out down in the description below, the Worship Foundations Worship Team Workshop. I'm so excited to share it with you. Check it out down in the description below. Other than that, thanks so much for joining me. Until I see you in the next video, keep leading worship well.